ChatGPT has become one of my most used third-party tools for After Effects because it lets me make third-party tools for After Effects. Seriously, I've been able to create extremely complex expression rigs, scripts with fully functioning UI panels, and even Blender add-ons that integrate directly into the app with zero training and scripting. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do the same thing yourself. I'll walk you through my process for working with ChatGPT to create Fractal Noise Generator, a sophisticated script for generating random textures with the fractal noise effect, and how I made better versions of the primitive rectangle, polygon, and star shape layers using expressions that allow you to non-destructively customize the shapes in a way that After Effects just can't. And all of these scripts and presets are available to download for free. There are links down in the description. Before we get into it, I just wanna make sure that you're aware that I have lots of free scripts and presets at jakeinmotion.com, as well as some paid tools and in-depth courses. If you're looking to get into motion design, check out my After Effects Masterclass, Launch into After Effects. It's over 20 hours long, and you'll get to learn the software from the ground up and make 10 really fun motion design projects along the way. Or if you're a motion designer that needs to learn Figma so you can start working with files handed to you by Figma designers, Figma for motion designers is exactly what you're looking for. Now, if you're ready to get into it, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, Ready, and let's talk about ChatGPT and After Effects. I made a video in 2023 about my first three scripts created with ChatGPT. They let you create a primitive line shape layer, sequence layers in a comp regardless of their length, and reverse the selected layer order. Nothing too crazy, but all things that I was frustrated I couldn't do natively in After Effects. If you've seen that video, you know just how difficult of a process it was to get three functioning scripts. Still, by the end of it, they all worked, even though I had no experience with scripting, and that was pretty mind-blowing. Fast forward a few months, I'm working in Blender and missing some of the features I had in Cinema 4D. So I tried using ChatGPT to make some add-ons, and I think it worked even better coding in Python versus JavaScript. It was able to successfully create a Psychwall object and a target light generator that both now live in my Blender UI. Since then, I've been able to use ChatGPT to create project-specific scripts for doing things like arranging layers into a specific grid, or an expression for sizing a text layer to the width of a comp. It's gotten good enough that I can jump over and ask for what I need and be back in After Effects completing that task faster than if I were to have just brute-forced my way through it. Now, let's go to the end of 2024. I released a script called Fractal Noise Generator to go along with my tutorial covering the new displacement property in the CC Ball Action Effect. This script generates a randomized fractal noise pattern every time you click the button, complete with customizable controls for how much the properties are being randomized, and even toggles for controlling which properties are targeted. It even pays attention to how many layers you have selected and randomizes them differently. Or if you have multiple instances of the fractal noise effect applied to the same layer, it only randomizes the ones that are selected. So there's a lot more going on here than my first three scripts that just did some very basic functions. At this point, ChatGPT had a new model called 4.0 that promises to be more capable at most tasks, and it absolutely was. I noticed right away that the code it generated was way more accurate and produced fewer errors. My approach to making this script started by asking ChatGPT if it knew what the brainstorm feature of After Effects was. It's an old feature that would randomize whatever you had selected and was removed a long time ago, but that's where I got the idea for Fractal Noise Generator. I figured if ChatGPT knew what brainstorm was, it would have an easier time trying to recreate that kind of functionality, specifically with the Fractal Noise effect. Not surprisingly, it was familiar with the feature, and with that context to my initial conversation, I asked in plain English what I was wanting the script to do. And the difference this time was that on its first try, ChatGPT gave me a working UI panel with the exact elements I asked for, and clicking on the randomized button did exactly what I wanted. A solid layer was generated, and a fractal noise effect was applied, and the properties were randomized. If you go back and watch the first ChatGPT video, you'll see just how much I struggled to get a working script, and how often I had to just start over from scratch. I couldn't believe that I had a working script on the first try. Now, it wasn't exactly what you see in the final version of the script today, because I didn't really think through all of the functionality before I started trying to make it. But that's okay, because I was able to just keep asking for features and tweaks until I was happy. After testing it out some more, I wanted to tweak the UI a little bit and chase some rabbit holes on a few things that eventually led to dead ends. I copied and pasted the code into a new chat when ChatGPT started making the same mistakes multiple times, but that was pretty much all just cosmetic UI issues that I eventually realized I either didn't need or found solutions for. As far as the functionality of the script goes, ChatGPT almost always nailed it. At one point, I did realize that certain properties weren't being randomized when they should have been, so at that point, I took a look at the code, which, with the relatively new Canvas feature, I was able to do directly in the chat. This is one of my favorite new ChatGPT updates because not only is it formatted like a code editor, complete with syntax highlighting, but I'm able to edit it directly in the Canvas editor or highlight specific portions of the code and reference that in the chat. And when ChatGPT is editing the code, you can see it happening in real time. While I was looking through the code, I noticed that the indexing for specific properties within the effect weren't accurate. ChatGPT was close, but it didn't account for the groups in the effect as part of the indexing. 
So I had to correct it there, but from then on, I was able to reference the properties the right way. And after a bit more work, I had a script that did exactly what I wanted. Being able to chat with the AI while seeing the code editor at the same time is such a great upgrade to this workflow. After I released the script, a commenter pointed out that it wasn't working with non-English versions of After Effects, which is something that I never even considered. So I went back to the same chat and asked it to make the script work in any language, and it universalized the code by using effect match names instead of just English labels for the fractal noise effect. And now I know what to look out for when I'm making tools in the future. A few days after that, I thought of another customization I wanted to add, so again, I went back to the same chat, asked for the new feature, and had my first feature update to push out. So I now have a much more sophisticated script that's extremely useful for generating random textures quickly with a full set of customizable controls. It still took a lot of back and forth to get to the end result, but it was much easier than my initial attempt with ChatGPT and scripting. And you can download Fractal Noise Generator for free. There's a link down in the description. And that brings us to 2025. I recently learned about squircles. A squircle is a beautiful shape that's a blend of a square and a circle. Essentially a square with rounded corners, but the roundness isn't perfectly circular. One of my favorite bands, Wolfpack, uses this type of shape for their brand, and Figma has a smoothness control for this type of roundness, and it's even non-destructive. Illustrator and After Effects can't do this without converting the shapes to paths and manually editing them, which good luck trying to do that perfectly by hand. And that's when I had the thought, I wish After Effects could do this, which took me right back to ChatGPT. Could you write me an expression that generates a squircle with smoothness controls? Now, this prompt took me a while to get right, but without too much trouble, I ended up with a working expression for drawing a rectangle with controls for the width and height, corner roundness, and smoothness. And the ChatGPT 4.0 model allows you to upload files, so I was taking screenshots of what the expression it had just written was generating and sent it back to ChatGPT explaining what was wrong. I'm not exactly sure how useful this was to the AI, but it at least helped me track the progress visually. After I had it all set up, I asked ChatGPT if there was anything it would do to optimize the code, and it cleaned it up a bit, and I had my custom shape. But that's something I would suggest you do too. Once you have a working script or expression, ask for optimization. Sometimes fragment of code that's redundant or overly complicated can get left behind after all of that back and forth, and asking for optimization can help clean it all up. From there, I naturally progressed to wanting to create versions of the polygon and star shape layer primitives with the same smoothing controls. I kept it in the same chat and it was able to produce the polygon, or what I'm calling the squalygon, very quickly. There were only a couple of minor issues that I had to work through to get a completely functional shape with controls for the number of points, the radius, roundness, smoothness, and rotation. So I checked that off the list and moved right on to doing the same thing with the star shape. That's where I started to have a bad time. At this point, I feel like I should tell you that while I do have a pretty good grasp on expressions in After Effects, I have never been great at math. And the amount of complex math that has to go into drawing vector paths to create a star shape with the roundness and smoothing controls that I wanted was way over my head. I wasn't expecting it to be much more complicated than the polygon was, which was still more complicated than I was able to understand, but I was wrong. ChatGPT was able to give me a parametric star, but as soon as I tried rounding it, things fell apart. I literally spent days struggling to get this expression to work and kept hitting the exact same walls. I tried using visual examples from Illustrator to better describe what I wanted, but no matter what I did, the expressions always failed. This is the closest I ever got to being able to draw the star shape correctly, and it didn't even have any roundness or smoothness implemented yet. I was honestly ready to give up and started planning out this video without the star expression, but wouldn't you know it, that's when OpenAI announced a few new ChatGPT models that I could try out. One of them was called the O3 Mini High, which it said was great at coding and logic. So I thought I might as well give it one more shot, and I wrote out my prompt again. I really wish I had recorded this at the time because what happened next was really fascinating to watch. ChatGPT cycled through a ton of reasoning at an incredible pace for one minute and 34 seconds before spitting out a massive expression complete with detailed comments explaining how it all worked all at once. And while it wasn't exactly what I wanted, I'll give ChatGPT credit because it is exactly what I asked for. Since I had fatigue from writing the same request down for days before with the 4.0 model, I forgot to explain that I wasn't just trying to recreate the native parametric star shape from After Effects. So it actually was successful on its first try, I just needed to refine it to include the extra controls I wanted for roundness and smoothness. So I asked for the changes and specifically told it to ask for clarification if it needed it. This is something I'm gonna do in the future and I would recommend that you do it too. The benefit here is that before attempting to code something for you with assumptions that could be wrong, the AI can essentially repeat what you're requesting back to you and ask for clarification on anything you might not have explained well enough. And that's exactly what it did for me. It gave me three points explaining what I had asked for and then asked for clarification on four of the details. I was able to respond very quickly and then went to work for a minute and 55 seconds before spitting out another expression. 
And while it wasn't working perfectly, I could tell that it finally understood exactly what I was wanting and used the right techniques to make it happen. The only problem was that when the roundness values increased, every other tangent was being extended in the opposite direction it should have been. But the functionality of how the vertices needed to move in order to round everything properly was working for the first time. So I explained the problem, it gave me another expression, and this time it was perfect. I had a working parametric star shape complete with roundness controls that behaved exactly how I wanted it to. After struggling to get the 4 model to this point for days unsuccessfully, I was blown away. In less than 10 minutes, I made it further than I did in the last three days. But I wasn't done yet. I still needed the smoothness control. So I asked for the new feature, and 17 seconds later, I had a new expression that did exactly what I had imagined. And now you can have it too. I've saved all three of these shapes as presets that you can download and install, and I even made a K-Bar version of them complete with custom icons too. So if you own K-Bar, you can install all of my little scriptlets and presets at once as a toolbar for easy access. You can download all of that in the description. And to prove my point even further, while editing this video, I found myself editing screen recordings in Premiere, copying and pasting them into After Effects, and then enabling time remapping and timing them to the edit. The problem is, when I enabled time remapping, it gave me keyframes for the beginning and the end of the clip, not the in and out points of the layer. So I was having to add those keyframes manually, delete the other keyframes, and then retime the clips. And that's exactly what this new model of ChatGPT is great at scripting. So I jumped over to there, asked it to make me a script, and I was back in After Effects and the rest of this edit went so much quicker. And it's such a great little script that I figured I should include it in here as well. So you can get that with the download either in the K-Bar version or the standalone script version. All you have to do to use it is select any number of layers with in and out point set, click the button, it'll enable time remapping and set in and out point keyframes and get rid of the other ones. I'll leave you with three key pieces of advice for using ChatGPT to write After Effects scripts and expressions. First, give it context. If what you're attempting to do already exists somewhere else, like the brainstorm feature of After Effects or the corner smoothing in Figma, bring that up before asking it to code anything. Getting the AI to understand what you're trying to make before it attempts to code anything will set you up for success, or at least less failures. Next, use the O3 Mini Hive model. It's so much better at understanding what you're asking for and writing the code. It can take a while to respond sometimes, but you can watch the reasoning happening in real time, and it's so much better at writing expressions. On the plus plan, there is currently a 50 response limit per week though, so keep that in mind. And lastly, tell it to ask for clarification if it's unsure about anything. This is gonna save you a lot of waiting around only to end up with something that might not work because you left something out or you weren't clear enough in your prompt. It's gonna try to give you exactly what you're asking for even if it has to make assumptions. So just cover your bases so it can clarify things before trying to code anything. That's it, go grab these downloads for free in the description. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 Ed,